Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MPGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is Mono Black Aggro for Dominaria Standard. So this week is kind of all about budget decks, and I wanted to go over a mono black deck because I feel like a lot of the like, mono color decks are actually very, very powerful. We did mono green stompy a few weeks ago, I think two weeks ago exactly, uh, and this week is going to be the rest of the colors, starting of course with mono black aggro. So let's jump right into it guys, starting of course with our creatures with four Nightmarker Lookout, four Vicious Conquistador, four Gifted Aetherborn, four Glenceive Siphoner, four Scrappy Scrounger, and four Amet Eternal. Uh, lots of four ofs in this deck, we want it to be very, very consistent. Whenever Nightmarker Look up is tapped, and whenever the Conquistor attacks, both opponents or opponent uh, loses one life. With Market Lookout, we actually gain one life. We don't get that uh, necessarily from the Conquistor, but we do get one extra toughness, which means against a mono red aggro deck or another aggro deck, we actually have some longevity in the early game. So both of these are great creatures for us, losing our opponent, losing hopefully two life when they attack out on turn two, uh, and of course gaining one life with Nightmark Lookout. Get the Aether Board, though, a little bit different. It's just a Death Touch Lifelinger for two, three when power and toughness. Um, Death Touch Lifelink is very, very powerful right now, and the Lifelink for us is actually quite important because it kind of helps us kind of beat uh, the curve against a mono red aggro deck. Uh, it's also just two mana as well, so it's a lot of power and a lot of toughness, and of course Death Touch for just two mana. Next up here for value for us, we have Glenceive Siphoner, a 2-1 for two uh, with Menace, which means that, you know, when it, if it comes down on turn two and starts attacking it on turn three, it's most likely going to be unblocked. Uh, when it enters a battlefield or attacks, we get one energy, and we can pay two energy and uh, draw a card and won't lose one life. So this is a basic card draw engine for us in the mid to late game. There are no other cards in the actual deck list that give us energy as well. I did think about throwing Aether Hub into the uh, mana base, but I do think it kind of takes away from the entire deck as we do need lots of black mana. And Glintsleeve Siphoner is just kind of like an ancillary card draw engine for us. Next up here we have four Scrappy Scrounger, a two mana three two. It can't block, but it is a three two for two attacking on turn three. That's very, very powerful. And it has a recursion mechanic here. You can pay to exile a creature card from a graveyard or from your graveyard rather uh, and bring this back onto the battlefield so if it dies on that turn and doesn't get exiled we're probably gonna bring it back as soon as the actual instep happens and a big attacker for us is Amit Eternal here a three mana five five that alone is ridiculous it also has a flick for three which means if it does get blocked it still does three points of damage which is very very good especially when we're trying to push in damage and uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell it puts a negative one negative one counter on the eternal so it kind of like incentivizes our opponent to play out their hand which is very good for us and as well as uh, whenever the Eternal actually hits our opponent, uh, all those negative one counters are removed. So this is such a like back-breaking card for our opponent, uh, very, very powerful for us. If they don't have removal against it like immediately, uh, they're going to be taking three, at least three points of damage, if not five and more. But that's not it for creatures yet. We still have two more in here. We have Dreadshade and Ruin Raider. Dreadshade, of course, being from Dominaria, a brand new card, triple black. So that's why we needed to have more black man instead of an Aether Hub in the deck list. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three shade. You can pay one black mana dread shade gets plus one plus one until end of turn this can turn into a four four five five six six you name it in the mid to late game this card is ridiculous very very powerful attacking it on turn four um opponent if they do not have a, a removal spell for this again they're going to be looking to have a world of hurt and of course one of the things that kind of like differentiates this from other fire raving mechanics is it's plus one plus one not plus one plus zero so turning into a four four five five six six it's just gravy for us and of course the last two cards in here for the top end uh, is two ruin raider a three mana three two uh, orc pirate with raid, which means at the beginning of your instep, if you attack with a creature this turn, reveal the top card of your library, and put that card into your hand, you lose life equal to the card's converted mana cost. So this is why the Gifted Aetherborn are in the deck as well, uh, to kind of hopefully mitigate the actual draw card draw engine from Ruin Raider, as well as give us the ability to make sure it doesn't hurt us as much when we do draw into like a Dreadshade or a Ruin Raider. Um, so our entire board state, or our entire mana curve rather, is quite low, being three the highest as far as creatures go. So doing a Ruin Raider mechanic and just losing three life for like a Dread Shade is very, very good, especially when our opponent uh, knows that we just have like every single card in our deck is just value for creatures. Moving on here to spells, we of course only have two, four Fatal Push, and three Supernatural Stamina. That's basically all you need in this deck. I could have put uh, two Vrasis Contempt over two Fatal Push here, but that's in the sideboard for us. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, four Fatal Push is very, very good, especially against another aggro deck or another Load of the Ground strategy. All our strategy is about going really, really fast, really, really wide, really, really quickly, and doing as much damage as we possibly can with Dreadshade, uh, Nightmark Look 
out Vicious Conquista or things like that. Drawn to stuff with Glimpsey Siphon or Ruin Raider. Fatal Push is going to hopefully help us kind of get that going and make sure we actually get through some damage uh, when they play out their early game, like uh, mana tappers, blockers, stuff like that. And Supernatural Stamina here is really great for us if we want to kind of trade with an opponent or block something with an opponent. A Stamina on top of a Gifted Aetherborn is amazing for us. It basically gives us the ability to remove an opponent's creature as well as bring back Gifted Aetherborn to the battlefield. If you don't know what by now, Supernatural Stamina is a one black mana instant. Until the end of turn, target creature gets plus two plus zero. When this creature dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's controls. But that is it for spells. Let's move on to the land base here. And of course, we have 16 Swamp, two Scavenger Grounds, one Field of Ruin, and four If Near Dead lands. Um, kind of just representing one Field of Ruin here because of the, uh, the flip lands are not really being that important right now. Uh, Legion's Landing is still very, very important in that particular matchup. Uh, but I do think Scavenger Grounds is more important right now. Uh, thanks to all the Graveyard Recursion, the Blue White Heroics decks, uh, the Green White Heroic decks, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, God First Gifts decks still floating around here. Scavenger Grounds is a very, very important card. We want to make sure it's in the main board. And Gift Field of Ruin is, of course, just here for the flip lands for, like, Ascanta, Legion's Landing, things like that. But up here that's really, really important as well is because we have a lot of, like, legendary indestructible creatures, thanks to Ronas, things like that, and um, all those kind of stompy lists going around. If their Deadlands is coming in here for that, we can tap it for Colorless, we can pay one and add one black to our mana pool, or we can pay four, Sacrifice the Desert, which means it's itself, or Scavenger Grounds, and put two negative one, negative one counters on a target creature and opponent controls. And of course, this is only during our turn, so just like a sorcery. Regardless, if near Deadlands is a very, very good removal spell against indestructible creatures. So very, very good for us uh, in the mid to late game if they have like a bomb on the battlefield, like a Ronas or something like that. But that's it for the main board here. Let's go over the sideboard tech and see what we can actually do in game two, starting with four Kites of Freebooters. So this is actually a slot for Duress for a while, but I do love the flying damage here. It's a two meta one, two flyer, and it's basically doing Duress's job here. When it enters the battlefield, the target opponent reveals his or her hand, you choose a non-creature, non-land card from an exile that card until Kaito Freebooter leaves the battlefield, so it kind of prompts a removal spell for an opponent, gives us kind of an early game advantage, and of course if we're up against an approach strategy, it grabs approach from their hand for just two mana, that's very very useful for us, as well as being a 2-1 attacker. Next up here for those God Pharaoh gift strategy, because we just want to represent it in here, is a 1 Dispossessed, so this is kind of just here for laughs. Uh, you could take this out and put in more, maybe more Duress, or maybe another Gaunti Lord of Luxury, either way I like this in here just for the laughs. It's a 3 mana sorcery, choose an artifact's card name, Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the chosen name and exile them. Then that player shuffles his or her library. So, very useful for us. We're up against a uh, approach strategy with, like, you know, torrential gear hook, things like that. Godfro's gift strategy, very important. Uh, any kind of, like, a uh, Mox Amber, something like that. Maybe a Karn Sign of Ursa strategy where we can't necessarily grab Karn, but we can definitely grab some useful artifacts, like a Walking Ballista from their deck. Next up here is uh, some more Hand Hate, a 3 of Doomfall. 3 mana Sorcery, choose one. Target opponent exiles a card he or she controls, so very, very good if they have a uh, just a indestructible creature on their side of the field, like a god. Or we get to choose a uh, non-land card from that their hand and exile the card. So that's a creature or a non-land permanent, so very, very good for us. Or non-creature card, whatever. <laughs> very, very good for us. Moving on here for some board-wide hate. Uh, this is Golden Demise, a 3-mana sorcery with a sin, which means if we control 10 or more permanents, we get the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. All creatures get negative 2, negative 2 until end of turn. If you have the City's Blessing, instead, only creatures your opponent controls gets negative 2, negative 2 until end of turn. So, more often than not, we're not going to really hit the Golden Demise as sin mechanic. Um, this is just a very good 3-mana board wipe for us. Um, and the reason this is here instead of like a Hini's Expertise or something like that is because, you know, we have History of Banalia creating 2-2s. Two we have all of these these hidden stockpile strategies creating lots of 1-1s, and of course all the servo stuff creating 1-1s. Um, Golden Demise is perfectly fine for us. There's no drawback to it like Bond Who's Us Reckoning, and of course it's one less mana from Yehini's Expertise. Moving up here to another card that's like Exile card from deck uh, that's very useful for us against the approach strategy is a 2 of Lost Legacy, a 3 mana sorcery. Name a non-artifact, non-land card, search an opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with that name, and exile them. That player shovels his or her library, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. So we want to get of Mastermind's Acquisition, and we want to get rid of Approach of the Second Sun in that particular matchup. So that's a very, very hard matchup for us to win uh, if we do not have those kind of pieces, or Lost Legacy rather, brought into our side, or from our sideboard into our main board. Another card that's going to go into that matchup is, of course, a one of Gaunti Lord of Luxury, a 4-mana 2-3 two, uh, two, uh, with Death Touch. So that's good enough on its own, but when it enters the battlefield, uh, look at the top four cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down, then put the rest on the bottom of that library in any random order. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may look at it, and you may cast it, and you may spend any mana as though or any mana of any type to cast it. Gaunti Lord of Luxury is super annoying <laughs> for our opponents, uh, and very useful for us, so again, if you want to take out the Dispossessed from the sideboard, I recommend it in putting in another Gaunti here. I just put the Dispossessed in here for, you know, some slight matchups that I kept running into, uh, but Gaunti is a very good card overall, uh, taking basically your opponent's best card and using it against them. 
one. And the last two cards here in the sideboard is of course some Planeswalker Hate and Creature Hate. This is a two of Vrasus Contempt, a four minute instant exile target creature or Planeswalker. You gain two life. Very simple, very straightforward, and uh, very useful in game two if opponents playing lots of uh, Planeswalkers or if opponents playing a lot of like God creatures like Ronas, stuff like that. Uh, we want to bring in Vrasus Contempt in that particular matchup to hopefully lock that strategy down. So let's move on to the full deck list here. On MPGO Traders, this is coming to a decent 49 tickets. And if you want to build this in paper, it's coming to a great 111 bucks. Uh, the most expensive cards being in the deck, of course, Brass's Contempt and Glintleaf Siphoner. Everything else is uh, pretty decent. Scavenger Grounds is, of course, a few bucks as well. But yeah, a very fast, very low to the ground strategy that's all about getting in as much damage as possible and hoping for a win uh, by turn five or six or so. But that is the full deck tech, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you have any suggestions for it? Please let me know down there in the comments below. And of course, if you have a deck that you want me to cover in the future, please let me know as well in those comments down below. I love you guys so much. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow for another budget deck tech.